Hello, I'm Logan Crawford, and welcome to the NFT Studio 24 podcast interview. NFT Studio 24 is a global media website dedicated to empowering the emerging world of decentralization, blockchain, metaverse, NFT, and crypto by reporting on the latest and most authentic news. We interview various figures to highlight their expertise and contributions to the industry to educate our global audience. NFT Studio 24 will soon be launching a Metaverse for All campaign in Africa, Japan, Pakistan, and India to help educate 3 million people around the globe, especially young students and adult learners about Web3 and Metaverse. We believe education is the key to development. So NFT Studio 24 is offering certificates of expertise and research to learners. Simply sign up at NFT Studio 24, read and research different case studies on nftstudio24.com, pass the exam, which is the hard part, I guess, and you will receive a certificate for the future. On today's episode, we have an amazing guest. His name is Mike Sorrenti, and he is the CEO of GamePill, and we are delighted to have him on our show. GamePill is a Toronto-based studio that is widely known for creating the most innovative games in the industry. Mike himself has more than 20 years of experience in creating games for Nickelodeon, Disney, Google, Mattel, and many others. GamePill is a member of the Blockchain Game Alliance, an organization dedicated to promoting blockchain in the gaming industry. And Mike, we are delighted to have you on NFTstudio24.com today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now, you have such an extensive background in gaming. Tell us why blockchain gaming is different from traditional gaming and why did you join the Web3 gaming industry? Yeah, I'd say I think what's exciting about it or what's different about it mostly is the industry players. So, uh, so far, our experience is that it has a much more of a startup feeling. So, uh, loose and fast, which is sometimes you know negative sometimes positive as we know um but uh we've been pretty it's been a pretty exciting environment to work in and uh we still work on web 2 and web 3 projects so we we still delve in both both areas um but we just find that uh, there's a little bit more um willingness to take risks uh when it comes to the web 3 uh side of things and i think that you know oftentimes greater risks equal greater rewards when it comes to game development. Absolutely. I guess you also feel like you're charting uncharted territory when you're working in game three as well, right? In web three rather. Yes, yes, it's totally, um, the players are not cemented right now. Um, you know, if you look at the traditional world of games, you know who the top publishers are, uh, you know who the top developers are, uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's all pretty cemented and it's been that way for quite a long time. Obviously there's some newcomers, but for the most part, you know, the top 100 uh, stays the top 100. Uh, when it comes to blockchain gaming, it seems to change often. And I feel like there's still a lot of opportunity for traditional game studios to, you know, delve in and become the leaders, um, but also new up and coming studios um, are always sort of being created and uh, those startups have a chance uh, for being incumbents, I think, in the future. It's it's a pretty nascent, you know, new industry. Absolutely. Do you think Web3 Gaming has more global career opportunities? And if so, how can young graduates or students build professions in the industry? Um, I, I wouldn't say that I think Web3 has more career opportunities, but I would say is gaming has a big shortage of talent at the moment. Uh, we're finding it difficult to fill some of our positions, whether it be a simple marketing position or a programming position. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity uh, to, uh, you know, have a job in Web3 and Web2. Uh, I think eventually that there's not going to be a Web2 and Web3 distinction. I think it's just going to be called gaming and uh, the differences will be just how how you interact with items in the game uh, and that sort of thing. 
Absolutely. It's sort of like nobody really looks on the inside if they're playing the game. They just want a cool game, which you guys are developing, of course. Exactly. If someone has no prior experience or education in gaming and wants to make games, is there a possibility for them to use blockchain to design games? Yes, I think there's a millions uh, or at least hundreds of tutorials out there to get you started. Um, there's many books. Really, it's a willingness to work hard and to learn. Uh, the resources are endless. Uh, and when it comes to gaming in general, uh, you know, Unity, Unreal, two very popular tools that allow just about anyone to create a, a game uh, of, of relatively good quality um, just by putting in time and, and dedication. When it comes to game development, I see there's a lot of tools by your company that can be used without the need for coding. How can artists and other creators benefit from these kind of tools? Um, I think that, yeah, there's there's a lot of different tools that can be used. I think the, the most tools right now, as I said, are free or they have a free trial. So the key factors would be work ethic. Um, and then, then there's also new tools coming up every day, right? There's AI generated imagery which didn't exist uh, not too long ago so there's a lot of different things that uh, game developers and hobbyists can use to create uh, whatever it is that they want to create so i think artists you know they're they're one of uh, probably the luckiest right now because uh, you can you can conceptualize at least your ideas pretty quickly and pretty inexpensively using some of the um, new ai type tools. I won't name them, but uh, I recently wrote an article about all of the tools and uh, there's quite a lot of them and they're pretty robust and most of them cost either nothing or, you know, dollars. Gotcha. Gotcha. As a member of the Blockchain Game Alliance, what's your company's goal in joining the community and why do you think other startups or individuals should join as well? I think when we first came into the whole blockchain industry it was through a project that came in our in our direction and we had really no knowledge of of anything and there was so much to learn uh, we had to learn about all the marketplaces all the players all the technologies all the chains so i think that the bga uh help, or the blockchain game alliance rather helped us to meet new people and learn quickly um, and i think that 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 was the biggest advantage but more than that we met a lot of interesting founders who we are helping uh to create their products um which was which is has been amazing and fun uh and, a, and quite an amazing journey so there's there's a lot of smart people in the industry many of them are on the bga uh, and i would recommend that uh everyone who's interested in blockchain join uh because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good contacts as well as a lot of good materials to educate you, which I think at the end of the day is very important. Absolutely, being part of a community like that is vital, I imagine, if you want to build a career, build a future, build an industry within it. And, and they also have some interesting parties that you can attend <laughs> in, in real life, which is also good in this COVID age. Exactly, it's nice to get out of the YouTube, uh, Zoom, virtual, <laughs> and actually meet human beings. It's like, what are they? Yes. What are they? <laughs> we got accustomed to it very quickly during COVID, but uh, it's nice to meet human beings for sure. What message or advice would you like to give creators, developers, and our viewers here on NFT Studio 24? Um, what message would I like to give them? Uh, I think get started now. Don't be afraid. If you want to build something, just do it. I, I think a lot of people are afraid that, um, you know, what they create can't compete or, you know, there's a lot of different factors in, in you know, people not getting started. Uh, I would say the biggest thing would be if you have an idea and you want to try it out, just try it out. It may not go anywhere. It'll be your first project. But, uh, you know, many of my first projects were, uh, you know, looking back pretty horrible, but uh, through trial and error, as well as a lot of uh, meeting a lot of interesting people to help me along my journey, uh, we've now been able to create some pretty impressive uh, products. So yeah, get started. And every first Just product that doesn't work out is bringing you a step closer to what will work. Right? Yes, mistakes are mistakes are important and should be celebrated. Absolutely. Okay, now it's time for our rapid fire questions, which is kind of like a lightning round. 
Three to five answers, please. Get ready to hit the buzzer when I ask you the question. No, there's no buzzer. <laughs> okay. okay. Here we, what will metaverse look like in the year 2050? I think metaverse is a tricky word, um, but I think that interoperability will probably exist within a few different products uh, in the future, at least into 2050. So uh, I think we'll get closer to that Ready Player One uh, experience. Do you think Web3 will be massively adopted over the next five years? I definitely think that uh, where central banks go is where everything else goes and central banks are experimenting with uh, a digital currency. So I do think that it, there should be pretty good uh, adoption um, of both crypto or, or crypto like products and uh, Web3 products. But as I said, I don't think anyone's going to be calling it Web3 at that point. Absolutely. Do you think the utility of NFT will change over the next decade? Yeah, I think it's already changing and it'll change day to day. I think it's limited only by our imagination. So I think that NFTs uh, and the technology in general, I'll go general, can be used in a lot of different places. Obviously, we, we focus on games and game development, um, but there's a lot of other interesting areas like contracts um, and just other things that, that can be done with physical uh, and digital counterparts. Um, and we've we've been doing thought experiments on it and, and I think it's exciting, but I do think that uh, the utility will change in the future. All right, Mike Sorrenti, CEO of GamePill, thanks so much for sharing your advice, your wisdom, and looking into that crystal ball into the future. Thank you. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more exclusive content on nftstudio24.com. I'm Logan Crawford. Until next time.